Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this time, we will going to present doing presentation about governance and globalization. But first of all, uh, I will introduce ourselves, me and my friends. My name is Lutfia Putri Rahmaningrum, and uh, there are Surya Ningsi and Muhammad Hagi Rahman Shah. Next slide. The first one is about the introduction. As traditional, local, national, and inter international political institution are no longer adequate to meet the challenge created by the process of industrial development. Governance em emerged as a new concept directly related to the process of globalization. Globalization is defined here as the latest stage of a process where technological, economic, ecological, cul cultural, and military trends traditionally observable on geographically limited scale and scope are extended to the entire globe. Globalization built on historical trends of ration rationalization, institutes Sionalization, expansion, and further socio-cultural and ecological degradation and exploitation. It now seems to have reached a new stage in the form of new and institutionalized global organizations. This new global institutional reality is, however, paralleled by corresponding process of localization characterized characterized mainly by its defensiveness and reactiveness. Next slide, it will be uh, presented by my friend Surya Ningsi. Next slide. This slide will be presentation by Surya Ningsi. Okay, uh, I will continue. The four conceptualization of governance mentioned here all have their shortcomings. The first is uh, good governance theory being uh, particularly non-original as it confused governance with government uh, with American style. The second is uh, global governance theory is closer to wishful uh, thinking than to actual reality. The third is civil society and corresponding civil society NGO uh, in Indonesia is LSM, uh, Lembaga Swadaya Masyarakat cannot be seen as being on an uh, equal footing with other newly emerging global actors uh, such as the ANC in Indonesia is, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, the same uh, mirip sama NGO like LSM and multilaterals. The last one is more over global governance is particularly a political and in this respect, a typical outcome of the UN, UN seat public relation exercise. Lanjut. Global governance, money, and power. <clears throat> I think the main players involved in collective problem solving at the global level are governments, international and multilateral institution, TNC, transnational, transnational corporations, <clears throat> and some NGO, NGOs, non-government 
non-governmental organization. They deal with such uh, issues as development, trade, uh, liberalization, and regulation, and security. The environment as a cross-cutting issue relates to all three dimensions, uh, security, sustainable development, and trade regulation. Uh, Examples are formed in the potential conflict arising from scarcity of natural resource, uh, sumber daya alam, or from transnational environmental damage. Banks have been keen to promote corresponding development projects. The next part is uh, national governance, managing networks mengatur uh, jaringan <clears throat> when public service is mainly the result public provision one can uh, identify new theore theoretical conceptualization such as network management here the role of government is to mobile and facilitate a complex network of public, private, and not for profit players. Uh, unfortunately, such conceptualizations are never fit uh, into the larger framework of governance nor related to developments uh, occurring above and below the nation state level. This level of governance has only been uh, re recognized in context of la uh, larger global problems, in particular after the publication of the Brun Brunland Report in Local Governance. governance. Lanjut, Fi. Ci. Mulai. Wait, wait, wait. Oke. Okay. Uh, local governance. Uh, local government is something else name namely community based on uh, local problem solving within the framework of a uh, larger globalization and localization. The first is global governance theory maintains the illusion. Uh, I mean that governance can be an encompassing concept that connect local, national, and global into one governance framework. The second part is global governance theory together with general property resource <clears throat> management theory. Uh, prospect people who believe that all the players involved in a particular governance mechanism are equal partners who decide about their common destiny and our use of their resource in all respect, the the four the four governance um, theory are particular damaging. They hide the power relations and strategy interests of the player. The last in property resource management theory mm, leads people to believe that all players involved in a particular governance mechanism are equal partner, like signing about their common destiny or use of their resource. Is my question clear? Okay. So I want to continue your presentation from Ichi. Uh, so, the conclusion 
this as a traditional or national international political institution. They are no longer adequate to meet the challenge set by the process of immigration reform. Such a government emerged as a new concept directly related to the cost of globalization. This new global institution already is, however, paralyzed by a corresponding cost of globalization. So, just many characterized mainly by its independence on the righteousness. Uh, the four conceptualization of governance mentioned there are all have their shortcomings is the good governance theory being particularly not original. As the confused, governance with government. Global governance theory is called to this both thinking that was for reality. Civil society and corresponding civil society, NGOs, cannot be seen as playing on an equal footing with other newly emerging global actors, such as the NCEs and multilaterals. The main player involved in collective problem housing at the global level are governments, international and multilateral, multilateral institutions, GNCs, and some NGOs. Uh, so the national governance managing their, their network in this level of governance, they have they has uh, only been recognized in the context of larger global problems, in particular after the publication of the Brandland Report in a local governance. So I'll continue to the next slide. So there's many questions for this discussion for this material. So the the one the one is does global economy bring opportunity for all or does it cause more insecurity and division? So, on the one hand, globalization for government can have a good impact. For example, the existence of neoliberalism that applies the concept of competition with the existence of uh, unbalanced economic competition in the world, the emergence of poor governments and rich government. And on the one hand, it can have a bad impact. For example, where is the sorry, belong to? Right, yeah. Okay, and on the one hand, it can have a bad impact, for example, such as modernization and economic development in the form of technology and industry and other fields. The second question is, second discussion is, how effective has the United Nations been in maintaining international peace and security? So, the unity of nations has a major influence on world security and peace with the existence of unification of competition and competition and conflict between countries can be resolved without fighting. This is the end of our presentation. I hope you guys, uh, you guys, you guys that are watching this uh, got something from our presentation. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.